Hi, my name is Darren Mostyn, and in this episode, we're going to be looking at tips and tricks in the Deliver page. And I just want to say a huge thank you. I got my first thousand subscribers last night. Um, I'm genuinely pleased. I can't believe it's happened quite so quickly, but thank you all anyway. And uh, let's get on with this one. So tip number one is quick export. You don't have to use the delivery page in order to export. We've got some presets up here and these can be found in the other pages. So if I go to the color page and we've finished our grade and we want to export this out now, you can just go file, quick export. And then we see our presets up here and you literally export, find your location you want it to export to and press save and it's done. So it's really quick and simple. This operation can be found in the cut page and the edit page, but not Fusion and Fairlight. Now, if you want to add your own preset, go to the deliver page, put your settings in that you want. So I'm gonna make a ProRes Quad 4 preset at HD. Click up here and say, save as new preset. Let's give it a name. And you now see this set here in our presets. So. In order for it to appear in the other pages, you need to click on here, quick exports. Now the quick export that we just made here is not in the list of quick exports. And the reason being is we're currently set to individual clips. Now a quick export can only do a single clip. It wants to take your 20 or 30 shots in this instance and make a single file out of it, a single graded file. Whereas at the moment we're set to individual. So what we need to do is update this setting. So let's switch to single clip, click on here and we say update current preset. And now you'll see the quick exports has it in our list. So we can include it in the quick exports, click on here, back to the color page, file quick export. And there you see our preset that we've just made. It's in HD, 25 frames a second, Apple ProRes Quad 4, just press export, save, and that will render out to the location that you set here. So tip two is expand view back in delivery page. And nice and simple, this one up here, you have a way of expanding your settings box. So just press on here. And now you've got a really clear view of all the settings that you might need to use. Tip number three is check your clips. This is a really good practice to get into a habit of doing. And before every render, I always check my grades up here. I go to clips and down here I can filter them. And what I do is I go to ungraded clips. And the reason being is that I don't grade in a linear fashion necessarily. On long form programs especially, I'll grade one scene that might be halfway through the program, then I'm back at the beginning, and I'm, I'm all over the timeline. So it's very easy sometimes to actually forget a clip. So it thinks I want to render just this clip and I'm in single clip mode, so it won't allow me. So I'm gonna say apply filter, and then it puts it into individual clip mode, which I'm, I can change after. And now the clip's highlighted, I can go back to my color page. There's the clip highlighted. Copy the grade with the middle mouse click there. Back to the delivery page. And now I can clear this filter off by going here and saying all clips. And then we can put it back onto a single clip if we want to. So I really recommend you do that. And you can also filter things like, you can look at uh, tracked clips, um, noise reduction clips. Sometimes I take noise reduction off temporarily. So I can search for all my clips with noise reduction and just make sure I've applied it back on. So tip four is disable updates during render. So if you go up to the main menu, you've got an option here called updates during renders, which can be set to off, minimal or on. And what this does is give you a live view as it's rendering. So you're actually looking at the render happening. So if you're running on quite a slow machine, you can literally switch this off. And so you won't see the preview while it's rendering, but your render performance will be quicker. Which also reminds me, if you press P, you can look at full view in the delivery page. Tip number five is use commercial workflow. And what this does is allow me to render out my grade, but with all the versions included as well. So some of these clips have got separate versions of the grade, uh, different options. And we can render those out into separate folders quite easily. So if we go up to here and go to file and come down, there's an option called use commercial workflow, but it's not enabled until you go to individual clips. You can't render out a single clip and do this workflow. So down here now we have use commercial workflow, click on that. And what I want to do is place the five versions here into separate folders. And I want the name of those folders to be the version name. So it'll be version one, version two, etc. And you can rename versions to be something that might be more suitable to the clip. So this is a common workflow in VFX as well. So you can send different versions to the VFX department. Tip number six is additional outputs. So when I render this, I can actually make multiple versions of it. So let's have a look. I'm gonna take off that commercial workflow. 
let's go to our video and I'm going to do a master in Apple ProRes Quad 4 in 1080 HD. Let's just give it a name. And the client wants to take away a H.264 version. So I'm going to go up here and say create additional video output. And you now see I've got a number one, which is our ProRes Quad 4. And if I click on number two, we get a shortened dialog box, which allows me to quickly dial in whatever I want. So I'm going to put in uh, H.264 as it was. Data burning will allow me to export with burnt in time code, for example. So I might do two versions, one with and one without. And I'm going to put a subfolder in here. So the H.264 version will go into a subfolder called 01. Let's just do, let's say these three clips. So I'm going to do mark out here, mark in here. And let's get rid of this one. I'm going to add it to the render queue. And the difference here is that you only get one job. So I've got two files being made, one in ProRes and one in H.264, but it's seen as one job. And the advantage of this is when I start this render is it does it all in one pass. So you only see the video going through once. So if your client sat with you and they're just watching the render, they're not going to see it render once for ProRes and then render again for H.264. You just get one simultaneous stream of the render. So it's a really quick and easy way of doing multiple versions. And if you want to delete a output, you can click on it and just press delete output down here and it's gone. So tip number seven is nice and simple, show job details. And what this does is allow me to see a bit more information in here about what's actually being rendered. So if I click here, show job details, now I can see that it's the Apple ProRes Quad 4 in HD. So it's just a little bit of reassurance as to what that job is. So tip number eight is Instagram formatting. So these days, it's not unusual to be asked to output for Instagram, particularly when we're grading branded content material. So we have to do mobile phone portraits, we have to do Instagram, and we have to do regular 16 by nine. So how do we go about doing that? So what we have to do is change the resolution in here. So we'd have to do a custom resolution, and for Instagram, it would be 1080 by 1080. But there is an easier way of doing that. So if we go into the cut page, we can click up here and there are presets for full HD, for portrait mode for mobile phones and also for square for Instagram. So if we press on the square formatting and then go back to the delivery page, it's now taken our settings for us. We know that we're in the correct setting and that is ready to export out for Instagram. So it's now square formatted. So in this case, what we'd have is black top and bottom, which brings us nicely onto tip number nine, which is about blanking. So how do we know this clip has now been made into Instagram format, but we can't really see the shape of it because we've got black and black here and our viewer is generally set to black. So what we can do is go to our user preferences, click on user and say use gray background in viewers. And what this does is make those gray and now I can see really clearly what the output for Instagram is gonna look like. This is also useful, not just for Instagram, so if I go back to the cut page and let's put this back into HD and go back to our deliver page and let's just make that fit. So we can now see very clearly at the top and bottom that we're clean. What sometimes happens is if you've zoomed out and done a pan and scan on your image, you sometimes get a little bit of blanking. So if I go to my color page, let's say we just zoomed a bit and we had that going on. If you go to the delivery page, you can now see that you've got a little bit of blanking showing in the top. This is also a good guide for if you're putting on um, 235 look or something like that. So if we go to timeline, go to output blanking and let's put a 235 on there and go to my deliver page, you can see it nice and clearly what's going on there because we've got the gray viewers. And that gray viewer applies to the color page as well. So particularly if you're working on a laptop, you can see exactly what you're working with and spot any blanking issues. So finally, tip number 10 is smart filters. So when I'm grading, I'll often come across a shot and I might need to do something a bit more complex that I don't want to do at that time. For example, object removal. I might want to just do that a bit later. So what I do is flag the shot. So I just go right hand click on it, flags and add a colored flag. And then what I'm gonna do is when I'm in the delivery page, just before I render out, I want to check that I've not got any flags that I've not completed the work on. So if we go up to clips, a bit like we did with the ungraded clips earlier, but you can come down here and say flag clips and look for shots with any flags. So I've got three flag shots. And what I try to do is remember to take the flags off once I've completed the work. So if I've done a bit of object removal, I'll take the flag off and then there's none left. But in this case, I've got three flags still on. So I need to go back into the color page to address those. 
And if you see up here underneath the word clips, there's a red line and that's telling us that we're in a filtered state. So we're currently in flagged clips. Uh, so if we go to all clips, that deletes the filter. So you now see there's no red line. And just be careful here that you use the pull down menu here and not clicking on the word clips, because if you do, your clips disappear. So you need to press that again to bring them back. Uh, so finally, there's a little thing down here called Smart Filter. You can create your own parameters. So have a look at all these. There's tons of stuff. You can use metadata. Uh, so we can say color timeline properties of graded clips is true. Adding some metadata. Uh, could be a certain camera. Um, you could say maybe all shots that have got uh, open effects on them uh, is false. So it show all the clips without open effects on. And just create yourself a Smart Filter there. And then if you click up here, you'll see that smart filter is added and you can delete them or rename them in this section here. So I hope you found those deliver tips useful. Let me know in the comments below. I always answer all the comments and it's always nice to hear from you. And hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell. And what else you gotta do? Uh, go to my Facebook page, Killer Tips DaVinci Resolve and look after yourselves and I will see you in the next episode.